One of the biggest mistakes made by real estate agents, both new and veteran, is not tracking their numbers. When you track your numbers, you can understand everything in your business, what's good, what's bad, what needs improvement, and what you can expand upon. A simple tracking sheet just like this, given to me by my coach, Jay, is something so simple that you can have on your desk in front of you every single week, enter into your computer at the end of the week, and track year over year over year. For example, when I was getting started in the business, I was setting an appointment with buyers almost every single day. But what I wasn't doing was closing those buyers. So I was making great contacts. I had many hours of power every day. I was setting appointments. People were showing up most of the time and I was signing listing agreements. But what I wasn't doing was these last two areas here. And if I was tracking it properly, I would have known how to refine my business a little bit faster. I wasn't pending clients and I wasn't closing them. While I did have a good conversion rate through my first and second years, there are things that could have been significantly better. So for example, if I had realized I wasn't getting buyers pending and closed, but I was doing everything else needed up until that point, what I would have realized is that during this entire process here, I wasn't providing enough value and asking the right questions to figure out if a buyer was qualified enough to actually purchase a house and if they were motivated enough to take the next steps. I was getting them into my office for the information gathering phase. We were talking, we were building a relationship, but we weren't getting the deals closed as often as we should have. So let's look at the sheet here and see how simple it is that you can include this into your business. First at the top, notice we have hours of power. Hours of power are designated lead generation hours in your business. You're not texting, you're not taking phone calls, you're not doing anything other than calling outbound for one, two, three, four, five plus hours in a row. A recent trend has been on Mondays doing the Monday madness and calling for eight hours straight the entire day with 50 minutes on and 10 minutes off. These are called hours of power. If you do enough of these hours, the data will be on your side and you can understand that your numbers, how they relate to each other with a much larger scale. So hours of power, cold calling, outbound prospecting, uh, circle dialing, door knocking, calling lead lists, whatever it is, you're calling straight. All right. We're going to track those to see what our lead generation numbers are. Second, we have number of conversions. So we're going to track our calls to our past clients and sphere of influence, our new contacts, people we have never spoken to, our follow-ups, so people in our database that we're still continuing to follow up with, and how many videos we're producing on a daily and weekly basis. So our past clients, self-explanatory, sphere of influence, it's the people that know, like, and trust us. Our new contacts, again, that could be new internet leads, sign calls, or any inbound lead that is new to your database that has never been spoken with. And follow-ups, again, is anyone that has been followed up with that you're continuing to do so in hopes of closing a deal. So those, all these contacts, these conversations are not, I'm not interested in hanging up the phone. It's giving you at least a sentence or two about their purchasing time frame and their goals. Video self-explanatory can be shorts or long-form videos like this. And then one of the most important things after we track how many calls does it take to get an appointment, for example, is tracking within our listings and our buyers, how many appointments set does it take to get someone to show up? Out of the people that show up, how many does it take to get a signature on our listing? That's our signed conversion rate for signatures and for getting listings signed. Once we have a listing signed, we need to know the conversion rate of how many clients, buyers and sellers, do we sign compared to how many do we get under contract? And then from there, again, the next step is how many people do we go from pending to sold? So we need to know all of these numbers because it'll help us figure out the shortcomings in our business and our scripting and our processes and our expectation setting with our clients, how we can increase and most importantly, where we need to increase. If we don't know where to look, we don't know what to focus on. And what we focus on grows, right? So what we track, measure, and focus on grows. So buyers and sellers, important to go from the appointment set, percentage of them set to attended, percentage 
percentage of appointments attended to listings signed, percentage of signed listings to pending listings, and percentage of pending to listings closed. Then we're going to look at our open houses and see how many we've done through the week and how many clients come from open houses. In our database, in our CRM, hopefully you have one, we use Chime CRM, we can log the source of all incoming leads to know what activities and what sources are bringing our clients so that we can focus on those and double down. If open houses, for example, are not drawing any clients, we either need to change what we're doing or stop doing them and try something else. We expect that we can give nine months of focused effort to each lead generation platform before we determine it's not a good fit or we're going to double down. In the case of open houses, you need to have a structure. Is that calling 100 people in advance, knocking 50 doors in advance, putting out a minimum of 20 signs? Are we choosing only new listings on the market? Are we choosing only well-priced listings, etc.? We need to make sure these are systematized so that we can ensure that our activities are properly being tracked and recorded so that we can measure, focus on, and grow our activities. So a simple sheet like this next to you on your desk when you're working each and every day is going to help you grow your business, understand where you need to focus your activities, understand where you need to get better, and understand how you can scale your business to the next steps. I'm Cody with eXp Realty, serving the Denver, Colorado market. If you have any questions about how to grow your business, if you have clients looking to move to Colorado, we're here to help.